All right. Uh, sorry to make you tell it again, but you can go through the it's, it's a short sequence of events. This was sort of how, uh, roughly how many years ago? Was picture it? you guys up to. Well, I, I think my mother's been dead for about 23 years, and she was still alive at the time. I think it must have been around 1978, 79, or maybe even 77. That's around when all the Abair stuff happened. Yeah, because she, she died in 1981. So, yeah, I think it, it was around that time when there were a lot of Bigfoot sightings. And, uh, but it's been quiet ever since that. But hmm. you think he's back in the area? I think they've probably been here the entire time. They just probably their really? behavior, yeah, has been a, a bit of, uh, a little more cautious. Well, this is a very isolated place. If something didn't want to be found, this would be the place to come because it's just. I mean, there's no access into this place except for that road right there, and you have the mountains and you have the lake and everything. It's just very, very isolated. Something like that could live around here, and you'd never notice it. So we'll walk through the sequence of events. Your dad was inside. Yeah. For this, because this camera wasn't set up when he told the story the first time. Yeah. Well, he was probably in the in the kitchen, and uh, there was a light on in there, but there was no light on in in here, and he could hear something rattling at the door, and he said, "Come on in," and nothing came in, but it kept rattling, and you know. And like so, rattling as if it was not not like she wanted to handle it. No. Pushing. Like this, you know make enough noise like that, I imagine. And so um, it didn't come in, so he went and investigated to see what it was all about. And the only thing he could see was, you know, distinctly were the two red eyes, and they were way up here. Of course, it could have been crouching, too, to see in. I don't know how tall those things are. But I imagine they're taller than this door, aren't they? Some of them can get that big. Yeah. So when he saw those red eyes, I guess it kind of scared him. He told it to start screaming at it to make it go away, and it left. And you could tell there was a big form. Yeah, yeah, you see that too. And but did, not it, did, did you tell that it did go away, or did he just yell and back off himself? Did he say? Did no, he it, it went away, and now uh, he shut the door and everything too. But I guess he didn't want to come out and investigate it any further. Well, actually, the reason that's important, it's a real important incident, because we've had thought for a while that these things would probably would try to interact with people if they thought if the, if the circumstances were safe I and mean, it would be at night where they thought they could get away if things went wrong but because of their appearance people usually react with a lot of fear and that's the, that's the barrier I don't think it's an instinctually programmed thing to avoid people I think it's a learned behavior that people see them and they they get terrified and that that kind of breaks up the the, the attempt uh, and so the reason that's important for us to, to know about instances of that uh, is because we think if, if we're in situations where they come around, if we can figure out what the protocol is that they use to, to begin an interaction with each other, then we might be able to, when it, something like that happens, we might be able to have an, some kind of an act, interaction, maybe a little bit of a distance, but to hold them there if we behave differently other than just fear. In other words, if we just try to start talking in their direction, gesturing to them, because in this case, you can deduce that it wasn't, it wouldn't have been hostility. I mean, it wouldn't have been a, a, a predatory action, a predation action, because this is, if the thing wanted to come through this, it would have. It would have just pulled this right off in a second. Uh, and or and it would have if he came and started yelling at it, it wouldn't have deterred it. But why would it come up and look in the door and make noise? It may have you know this is something it may have been around and been watching for a long time and became familiar with the sight of him and, and you and may have judged at some point that it wasn't necessarily dangerous. And it could be at some points they get hungry or something and they think that they see people coming up to other houses and they you know they think you know what the heck let's try and see what will happen and they don't get a very warm reception and they just back off so we're thinking it's not necessarily a dangerous thing to advise people that if that happens to show these things some respect I mean treat them as if they're 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 intelligent and they're civil and just see what happens. Because if well, they would attack people, we probably would have heard about it. Well, actually, I heard a really interesting story. One time, some people came up here 
and they they were talking about Bigfoot, and this guy actually had a friend that was captured. I don't know. This it, they seem like very sane people, and he said that he had a, a, a friend who was a man, and he was captured by a Bigfoot family, and he was taken to a cave or something where they lived, and they were really nice to him, and but he got the impression that they wanted him to mate with their daughter. <laughs> I, this, this is what the it guy told like a, me. Did you like ever hear that? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a variation of the Albert Osman story. Who's that? Uh, he, was a, he was a miner, uh, a prospector up in uh, British Columbia. And this is a really famous story. And it's, mm -hmm. he was picked up in a sleeping bag. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was carried off to a little valley where where they basically held him almost captive for a while. And, and he was able to escape at one point. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, and there was two adults, and I think there was at least two young ones. And the twist of wanting them to mate with the daughter, that, that, that's almost like a, uh, I mean, that, well, that sounds like a kind of variation on the tale. But, well, do you uh, think that's true? I think the Albert Osman, the basic story about him being taken away mm -hmm. after them, because he had described some behaviors that, uh, that like, especially like the chattering, the talking, mm -hmm. of decades before anybody else mm -hmm. uh, had either recorded that or, or described hearing that. So and, they do have a language? Yeah, they do. Mm. They do. And Adam, where is Adam? Oh, Adam have, has actually heard those sounds over really? uh, in East Wendell. Adam, yeah. come over here for a second. <laughs> hey, stand so that you can touch him when you're talking to him, otherwise you're not going to be in the scene. Don't touch me. But. <laughs> uh, wait, tell, describe the sounds that you've heard over there. The different, all the different kinds of sounds. All the, um, usually it sounds like, like kids talking, little, little children. They don't, you don't hear words, it's just like, like jibber jabber. Back and forth. Back and forth. High, high pitch. Sometimes low. Okay. Um, and this is outside the house? This is down, yep. Down right where, along that road where we were last night. You hear just loud, like, whoop, like that. Kind of like what you guys were doing last night. Maybe just, that was what I heard. Like, all different, high pitch. It's all, it's like a big range. Okay. And I can't really describe some of them. Just, how many different years, how many different seasons have you heard the chattering back and forth? Or was that only Since I can remember. You've heard it several times over the years. Almost, almost every spring. Some t some years it's different than others. And, and were you in the house when you heard you it, like hear out a window? You can hear them from in the house. Usually we're outside. They're that close. I don't know how close they are. It's loud though. Mm -hmm. It is loud. And sometimes it's farther off in the distance. Sometimes it's real close. And does it sound like a subdued mumbling, or almost like they're arguing with each other? Mm -hmm. It's just. Jibber jabber. I mean, I don't really know how else to describe it. It's and just, how long will it go on for when you do hear it? Just a few seconds, or it depends. Usually, like the loud, like the moans, the whoops, or whatever you call them. Those sometimes, you know, a couple minutes. Is there any time during the year, like by the fifteenth of April, they're usually here, or anything? Time frames you Middle can pinpoint. Middle of late March to end of May, early June, depending on the weather, depending on how warm it gets. It feels, you know. Like that. Okay. I wonder if they head south in the winter. I think they, they will tend to, my guess is they'll tend to stay around in, in generally the same area. Because if, if they were to move long distances, they'd probably be seen a lot more. They'd have to cross open spaces or fields. I mean, they could. I think in some parts of their life, they probably will travel long distances, but they'd be, it's easier to stay hidden, and I think they could certainly find enough to eat up here, even in the winter, because there's a lot of animals that don't hibernate. I think they feed on animals in the winter, yeah. as opposed to foraging. So what other kind of, you've heard the whoops, you've heard the chattering. Yeah. How about knocks? Every now and then. Not so much. Okay. I know you. Have you ever, Jennifer, ever heard any knock sounds? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Okay. Just a woodpecker. Okay. <laughs> The, so the, no. uh, the the knock sounds. Uh, um, have your did your dad anybody ever on the property ever say they thought they heard what sounded like somebody cutting down a tree or anything like that? Because that's what it would sound like. It would sound like somebody chopping wood, but no. not not continuously. Just like everyone's walk, not not. No, I don't believe so. I've never heard anybody mention that. Okay. How about people duck hunting? Mm -hmm. That that must go on. Regularly, oh, right. oh, yeah. so yeah. you can hear gunshots. Yeah. 
What's that? It said in the morning. It sounds like a war zone. <clears throat> yeah. But I mean, that's guns. So in other words, if you were, if you probably were to hear something like a knock sound, you probably wouldn't even give it a second thought because of all well, this. I'll keep an ear out for it from now on. Maybe I just I don't know. I thought it was a tree falling down or something. Yeah. Okay. Hey, so Neil, come, come over here for a second. Yeah. Uh, so we can do for. You've heard. That, tell me. Tell. Let them hear your story. Well, I was asleep in my minivan. I lived in it last summer, and I happened to be parked up on top of the hill, up there, and I had a chihuahua in the car. And all of a sudden, you know, the dog it was about two o'clock in the morning went berserk, yipping and yapping, and I told him to shut up. The next thing I know, that something hit the van. I don't know really what. I mean, it started rocking, so I got up. I was half asleep, and I did see something come down, you know, walking away. Was it the bear? I don't know. But I've also seen, you know, mountain lions here. You have seen mountain lions? Oh, you oh, yeah. stepped on it. Yeah, right down right there. there. Well, there's the been barn. mountain lions right here in the driveway in broad daylight. Oh, yeah. Big ones, eh? Yeah. With long tails, little paintbrush thing at the end. Oh, I, I've seen them coming out of the barn at night. But this looked like a bear at or night. something. I mean, but it was going you know, across the field. It was up, 20 feet. Okay. You don't know, but you can't say for sure it was upright. Uh, something brought the land. Okay. And I can't swear whether it was upright. It probably was. I don't know. But it was I mean, at dark. It was at night time. It was at night, yeah, at 2 o'clock in the morning. Okay. And I was only half awake. Definitely. Have you seen bears here too? Yeah, there's bear here. I've never seen. Oh. I've never yeah, seen there's bear. bear here, but I've never seen one. Okay. No. And you know they're here because you found tracks. Well. Yeah, yeah I've I guess seen so. Tracks. And some people have seen them. They're usually way up on the mountain now. Okay. Yeah. I've never seen any in the field. Have you, have you ever seen that bears? Um, no. And it, I have. Okay. I think one day when we took a walk up there, it looked like a bear track. It was a small bear. Mm -hmm. I hope I never do run into one because I'd, I'd like to go for long well, walks. Black bears are okay. Yeah, black I had bears those are. In New Jersey. Yeah. I would want to run, run into all the time. Time. Mountain lions are much more dangerous. <laughs> Well, Nils was walking a little chihuahua about 11 o'clock at night up the road here in front of the barn. And there it was, stretched out across the whole road. And he went, oh, my God. What, that that six foot? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so that's when he, that's he snatched tears up oh. and just started backing up. He didn't turn around and run. He just started backing up. But that cat got up a little. Yeah. But, but I really don't know. Much more it could have been, it could have been disastrous, especially for the little dog. But I really don't know who or what rocked that thing. It was going across toward the lake. Toward the lake? Yeah. Okay. You can go. I'll have to show you. I mean, I can show you. Okay. And how far? Um, uh, have you, Jennifer, have you noticed, was there, was there a lot more deer in the past? Than what there is, yeah, people are complaining now that there isn't much deer around here. Although someone has seen a six-pointer. Really? Yeah, but that, that's rare. So there used to be, but there was definitely in the past, there was a lot, there seemed to be a lot more deer around. What's the biggest well, we herd? In the morning. Okay, you see, you hear, you hear, well, I mean, see bigger there's not, here. there's not any bucks around. I think is what they're complaining about. You know, want, maybe it's been overkill. They don't get a chance to get the big horns. You know, but I don't know. And when hunters come in here and like apply for, uh, I mean, well, they, I know that they can get a permit to hunt on major conservancy land. Do, who do they go through? Do they come to you guys here to? To make well, those most, mostly it's just our relatives that hunt, and they you no, know, they would have to get permission from Nature's Conservancy. Okay, so you don't you, you don't often see hunters in here that you don't know. No, well they they come in they come in over the mountain, and you wouldn't even know they were there. Okay, but, but I know the people just shots. come in, yeah. And you see, I imagine you probably see turkeys here. And oh yeah, a lot of turkeys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had them right beside the motorhome one morning. And the cats are 
God, that's the biggest bird I ever saw. Yeah, I've seen a lot of turkeys. <laughs> they were freaked. <laughs> They've never seen a turkey. Do you remember a year where it seemed like, I mean, after which the, the deer population seemed to drop off dramatically, or did just a 